Hello and welcome to the high speed plat platforms here at St. Pancras International International Station. I'm here today to ride Britain's first and so far only high high speed rail line. Uh, so with 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 any any further further ado, here here's some history and I'll see you getting on the train which I believe is pulling in now. High Speed One's history traces back to the mid-1970s, when British Rail proposed a line linking from London to a proposed rail tunnel to France. This pr proposal turned out to be not very environmentally friendly, and so it was scrapped. However, in the 1990s, construction started on the Channel Tunnel linking England and France. In conjunction with this, a high-speed rail line in France was built from Par Paris to the Channel Tunnel. The British side of things, however, was less or organized. For one, in 1987, under Margaret Thatcher, a law had, had, had been passed that banned any government funding for a rail link to, to the Channel Tunnel. Now, I thought Britain wouldn't be as dumb as America, but apparently under Margaret Thatcher, they were. However, by 1996, this law had been repealed and, and construction started, and in September 2003, the first section opened, from the Channel Tunnel to Falkham Junction in northern Kent, near the current Ebbsfleet International Station. This section of track only hosted Eurostar trains, and cut London to Paris travel times by 20 minutes. However, after Falkham Junction, trains still had to use existing low-speed suburban lines to access London using Waterloo as a term minus. This was, of course, not ideal, and in 2007, Section 2 opened, with a nearly two-mile tunnel under un the Thames bringing it into London. It then entered a second tunnel, this one around five m miles long, to, to Stratford International Station. Stratford International is, side note, actually not international, as no your, your star train stop there or ever have. After Stratford, the line ran to St. Pancras International, a newly renovated term using newly built tunnels. However, in 2007, when the line opened, there was still only Eurostar trains run running. This all changed in 2009 when Southeastern, then South Southeast Trains, started high-speed services using Class 395 Javelin trains built by Japanese manufacturer Hitachi and loosely based on the Shinkansen design. These services now run from London to Ashford and then continue on lower speed lines to various destinations in Kent. This is an interesting and unusual use of high-speed rail, as these are essentially commuter trains that happen to just also be able to go 140 miles an hour. So with that cool history out of the way, let's see me on one of those javelin trains heading out of St. Pancras. Alrighty folks, we just pulled out of St. Pancras uh, about a minute early. Um, and I know the route out of London, London is, most, is mostly tunnels, but we do stop, stop at Stratford International. It's called Stratford International despite not serving the Eurostar. Um, although Ebbsfleet and Ashford are also now not worthy of their, in, of their international name because Eurostar doesn't stop there anymore. Um, but yeah, here's an announcement. Said is to Margate. So true. Um, and now, um, this train does obviously they continue off of HS1. They don't run the train just just to Ashford, but that's where I'm going. Um, and we are now, I think, entering a tunnel. Indeed, we are. So, oh, oh. Uh, or maybe not. Uh, and now yeah, I'll see you at Stratford. Okay, welcome to Stratford International. Um, I think the, that track, which then splits into two, maybe that's probably your star track, because um, of course the your, your star does run through here. Um, as for why this is international, as far as far as I know, the your, your star they were originally going to stop here, but then like they didn't, which seems kind of like. Point to me. Okay, so I did some research, and apparently, yes, Eurostar was originally supposed to stop here, but but then they decided not to because they were gonna run services to other places in the UK. But apparently, uh, the rest of the U UK is not worthy of your your star, and having a stop seven minutes out of St. Pancras is not not great. Uh, that is paraphrasing, but that's roughly what the Eurostar people said when, as as to why they didn't stop at Stratford. Welcome to Ebsley International. This station is in the middle of suburban park and red hell. And if you don't believe me, here's a Google Maps screen screenshot. It's like parking lot, parking lot, and then there's like a road with a really sketchy look, look, look inside sidewalk that might not even really be a side sidewalk. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I do find it mildly funny that the signs on that side say way out and, and then... Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll speak French. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that, but it says exit in French, uh, which we have. We have indeed. So the your star used to serve both Ebbsfleet and Ashford. However, uh, it does not anymore um, because I think like 
it was losing the money uh, during COVID and then they never restarted it post COVID. I think they're still promising to restart it at some point, uh, which as we all know, when train companies temporarily suspend something that is, it's always temporary. <clears throat> no, it's not. Um, but we'll see this, this one may, maybe, um, anyhow, we're at, 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 so after this, we should get that really zoomy speed, uh, and this is also the section of the line where they've built quite a bit of infrastructure to make the line be zoomy, so we're heading out of Edfleet now, um, and yeah, uh, when we hit top speed, I will film and say, whoa, we're going so fast, so let's get to that. Alrighty, these are the Medway Viaducts, uh, that's the M2 mode, mode right? this is a HS1, so uh, it, it's a massive viaduct crossing the Medway Valley line, the, the, the river Medway, which is down there, and then a uh, bunch of farm farmland. So that is a big piece of engineering and it's cool, Tim. And also we're going about 135 right, right now. I checked my speedometer right before filming and we were accelerating to 135. So if we did hit 140, um, I will now splice in a screenshot of 140. So I'll see you further down the line when something else cool comes up. Alrighty, here we are, Ashford Intel, which is cool. And we're pulling in now and there's another javelin. Um, I was planning on getting the 1140 train back to St. Pancras, which I probably still will, but the 1116 is late and you, and you know what that means. We get to do more foaming noise. Just real, 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 I'm running enough to walk like the whole length of the platform to, to get back to the front for the train to St. Pancras. Eh, it's fine. And anyhow, welcome, 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 welcome to Ashford. Let's cut to a foam shot. Alrighty, welcome to Ashford International. Apparently that's the train back to London, but that's the 1116. Um, I'm gonna stay here until 1140 um, and foam and do a station tour review thing. There are still signs to Eurostar, which is kind of funny because as I've said, the Eurostar does not stop here anymore. Um, on the South of South of the high, high speed pl platform, there are vending machines. Uh, there is a dot matrix. Um, oh. Okay, well, good. I'm not taking this train up. up, up, up apparently, it's standing room only. Uh, that would probably not be very fun. Um, so, yeah. Now, I guess I will follow the signs to a way out and uh, go up to the station building and do a tour, I guess. Because uh, what else do you do with, with 30, 30 minutes at Ashford? A tour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. cut for that. Okay, so, uh, Ashford Station wasn't all, all that cool, uh, there's not really anything in, in, in there, there's just a cafe on one, on one of the platforms, uh, and an overpass, no history, no cool station building, nothing really to review. So, uh, now cut to the saga of me getting back to London, which was only a saga, because one of the trains broke down. Okay, that's interesting, seemingly what, what they do is, I'll film this, but it looks like... They're gonna couple these trains together. So, we, so it's a six coach train. This is another the six coach train, and and then they'll couple them. Um, so I actually may get back on this train because I thought that I could film here, but there's I I looked and I don't think I can see a Eurostar. Um, so if the front half is not just crowd, crowded, I think I'm gonna get back back on this train because thought Ashford would A, have more stuff, and B, not be as uh, bad for foam foaming. Uh, no, this is so pretty to crowded, to crowded. But I, I think the 11, 1140 would probably be just as crowd, crowded. Um, I still might take this, but it seems like this train is significantly more crowded, although that is ridership, which is good. Um, is there a free table seat? No. There are free seats. I might take it. Take it. Uh, sure. Uh, 
I think I'll hop on this train. Providing, of course. Okay, the front car, car, car coach is also nearly empty. But also, I think I'd rather wait the 13 or so minutes uh, for the 1140 just to foam this one. So, yeah. See you at, uh, well, see you with the foam shot. This clip is nearly two minutes long. I, I may have cut this. So, sorry for a weird transition. All right, voicing the, this over because I didn't explain it very well, but basically the train broke. Uh, this footage is of me explaining that and then a, Eur a Eurostar passed by, so you'll see a Eurostar pass passing by in a few seconds. But yeah, uh, the train broke down. The driver said he was calling Hitachi and it, it wouldn't move. So they put um, every, everyone from that train, which was 12 cars, plus everyone that was already on the 1140 train, which, which, was, which was six cars, so 18 cars worth of traffic on a six-car train. Um... Many people didn't get a seat. I got the jump seat by the toilet, which was, uh, uh it was truly unexperienced. Uh, but yeah, then we got back to St. Pancras and all was fine. Oh, Earl, I think this line is very cool, um, just because of the high, the high speed commuter rail aspect of it. Like, I haven't seen that really anywhere. I'm sure there are other examples of, of it, but it's the only one that I've seen. Um, and then also just, the whole fact that it's like actually a lot faster than driving, and that South Southeastern is using the the Eurostar in infrastructure for d domestic uh, services is a good thing. So yeah, with uh, that kind of rambly outro out of the way, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.